I cut the hair. Do you want to see it? I bet you don't want to. Do you want to see it? I'm just gonna do videos like this from now on. Is this a good look? I did do a video about framing. This isn't great framing. You didn't think I was actually going to hide it from I did it. It's, I did it myself. It's all right, I think. I'm sure you will tell me if you think it's awful. Um, let's use the thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up if it's good, thumbs down if it's bad. So we are back with another hobby video. It's been a while since we've put any hobby stuff out and I thought it was about time we got back on that train. And there's been loads and loads and loads of announcements about Ninth Edition, so I thought this was probably an ideal time to start talking about some of the facts that we know so far for those of you that might not have been following the community posts or watched the Twitch stream recently. Before we get into that, I wanna speak about something we're doing on the channel currently. So if you haven't seen already, I'll link it above. Is it this side? I think it might be this side it comes up. I don't, I'm not used to this part yet. I'll link it above. There's a video called The Start of the Saga or The Beginning of My Saga. I've started a Space Wolves project, which actually looks like it might be landing for the first time in 9th edition instead of 8th edition, which is quite interesting. During the period of that saga, I've said that any commission I make from one of um, my affiliates, the Beard Struggle, will go directly towards male suicide awareness. That's a massively important topic, I think, for everybody. And considering what's going on in the world right now, it's probably more prevalent than ever before. In the month of June, in the month of June only, any purchase made um, using the link in the video description below and my discount code, and it needs to use my discount code so I can see that you've made that purchase, I'm going to match the commission amount for the donation that goes to uh, male suicide awareness. Now, what I've basically said is, as long as I'm running this project, all commission is going to be donated because I it, it's going to motivate me to build and paint stuff and finish the project, but also it does something good and I like doing something good. So I'm going to match it for the month of June. So any purchases you make in the month of June, I'm going to match the commission as a donation towards male suicide awareness. In addition, if you send me a screenshot on Discord or on Gmail or something like that, if you, or email, if you send me a screenshot of your purchase, I'm going to enter you into a competition competition for a £50 Element Games or Games Workshop voucher at the end of the month. I say Element or Games Workshop because that means you guys over in the United States can also get involved because obviously you guys can't get 40k from Element, uh, from Element Games, but you'll get a GW voucher instead. Of course, if I never finish the project, that means I'm going to be donating all the commission forever, but it's going to a good cause, so I'm quite happy for that. Anyway, 9th edition. 9th edition was announced recently. We haven't really spoke about it on the channel very much. I think we spoke about it before the big release, uh, Chris and I on a podcast. Um, Winters and I have covered it on deploymentzone.tv in a in what we call a DZHQ, which is where him and I sit down. And we did it over the magic of the internet, but we sat down and chatted about it and, and some of the rumours we'd heard and some of the changes that we'd heard. Since then, there's been more community articles that have been released on the Warhammer community page, and they've given us some more details as to what exactly is happening in 9th edition and... On the whole, I think they are really, really positive changes. Um, some things I'm going to cover and some things I'm going to clarify. So the three main things I want to cover in this video are match play and how that's changed, command points, and the different size battle grids. So released on the 3rd of June was an article on the community page that talked about match play and the changes that have happened to match play missions. Um, this is some really interesting stuff because they seem to be heavily influenced by ITC type format. As a person who's played ITC type format before, I actually kind of really welcome this for match play. I really love the ITC type format. I like the fact that it gives armies who cannot achieve certain objectives ways to achieve other secondary objectives so that can keep them in the game and keep these matches a little bit closer and a little bit tighter. Now, the particular article does touch on that and basically said they don't want armies to be able to run away with the mission and therefore they're capping how points can be scored and they're changing the way you score primary and secondary objectives which basically means your games of Warhammer 40k in 9th edition should be closer more tighter fought contests and that's got to be better for both players no one likes turning up and get smashed off the board in turn one by an alpha strike or turn two no one likes that no one enjoys that that's not fun for anybody so if they're going to be able to stop that from happening and improve those scenarios with these missions it's a welcome change they've also changed sort of the way that points work and they sort of go up in four or five stages now. So I think it's 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. That's really important for a number of reasons because they are, are basically aiming those points values at different styles of missions. So they're called different things. 500 is a combat patrol. There's an incursion at 1,000, a strike force at two, 
and I'm going to check my handy I've onslaught at 3,000 points. Now that's a points limit, which means it's up to those points. So people have said, oh, there's no 1750 option, but that goes up to 2,000 points, so that's a strike force, and it's over 1,000, so it's not an incursion. And that's how I see that working. It's a up to points level, so you don't have to play 2,000 or 1,000. You can play 1,500, but 1,500 is above 1,000, and it's up to 2,000, so you're playing strike force. And I think, to be honest with you, most of the time we're going to see strike force type missions. We're going to see strike force type missions on YouTube, strike force type missions in tournaments. I think that's probably going to be where we find the point sweet spot is somewhere between that 1000 and 2000 points level like it's always been. Interestingly now also linked to points level is command points. This is a massive, massive change from 8th edition. So command points were a new system in 8th edition, something that personally I whinged about quite a lot because it wasn't great, I think, the way it was implemented. I love the concept, I love the idea, but it always meant that I, as a Sam Han player, for example, with my elder, um, taking a pure bike list meant that I was at a massive disadvantage to another player who had... Um, a double brigade or some nonsense like that and had loads and loads and loads and loads of command points because stratagems and the things that you can use command points for can really change the flow of a game and can really change the way a game works. It can give someone a massive advantage. So now what they've done is they have linked command points to the points level. Up to 500 is 3, up to 1000 is 6, up to 2000 is 12, up to 3000 is 18 command points. Now that is a starting number of command points, so it doesn't matter what armies you or your opponents have, at that particular stage you both start with 12 command points. So strike forces, you've got 2000 points each, you start with 12. However, they then change mildly depending on the type of detachments etc that you pick. In the past, detachments used to give you a command point bonus. If you took a battalion, you gained five command points. If you took a spearhead, you gained a single command point. In this edition, they flipped on its head and they've changed the way it works. Now, if you want to take a battalion, it costs you three of your command points. So you start with 12 command points as a strike force and you want to take a battalion. That costs you three command points. You're down to nine command points straight away. For each additional detachment that you want to take, it's going to cost you an additional number of command points. We don't know what they are exactly yet, so perhaps a spearhead will be one or two command points, an outrider may be the same, a super heavy auxiliary might be different altogether, but they're going to cost you additional command points to take additional detachments. So now we are no longer, I don't think, going to see people trying to spam as many detachments as they can within the points limit. We used, always used to see a maxed out three detachments if people could, because it meant they got the maximum number of command points for their army. And I don't think we'll see that. I think quite often now we're going to see quite a lot of single detachment armies. What they have said is the three core detachments, which I assume is patrol, battalion and brigade, I think they may have told us already, correct me if I'm wrong, if your warlord is in one of those detachments and that particular detachment's command point benefit is essentially three. Uh, three? Free. Not three. Free. I say three because the example they gave is a battalion. So a battalion would cost you three normally. If your warlord is in that battalion, however, you get those three back, putting you back on 12. If you then take an additional detachment, like another battalion, that would then cost you three command points because he obviously your warlord cannot be in both detachments. They have hinted at if you're souping, it's going to cost you command points to do that. I don't know if it's simply going to cost you the command points of the detachment or additional if it comes from a different codex. It'd be really interesting to see how they implement that. Importantly, there is a battle-forged benefit as well. There is a new phase in the game that we've never heard of before called the command phase. And they're saying that lots of armies are going to have abilities that are able to be used in the command phase. This is something that seems like it's directly pulled from Age of Sigma. Age of Sigma kind of has this already. I think it's called the hero phase. And it's a phase at the start of the game where you can implement strategic sort of rules and strategic elements of your army before the movement phase begins, etc. Now, one of the bonuses in the command phase, if your army is battle forged, is you gain one additional command point every single round. One of the other big things they've added in match play is secondary objectives. In every single game now, there's an opportunity to score secondary objectives up to a total of 15 points per game. Uh, you get points for killing characters, you can get points for killing the number of models, you get points for holding objectives, you get points for having models in certain quarters of the board. It's basically ITC secondaries, I think, but adjusted or adapted. Again, I said this already at the beginning of the video, this is something that I really, really, really welcome. As a man who's played ITC, I love the ability to go up against an army and go, well, I can't deal with X and I can't do Y, but what I can do is select these three secondaries for this particular mission and that gives me an opportunity to score a number of points and maybe just maybe keep me in the game or even give me the opportunity of beating an opponent that I wouldn't normally be able to beat in a straight up slot. This is something that I think is an amazing change for match play and kudos GW for taking on a system that basically belonged to someone else and adapting it for themselves. This is excellent. Well I think it's excellent. They've also hinted at a number of points changes across the board. Cultists are up to five points, intercessors are up to 20 points. Basically what we're looking at is an army is going to be significantly more expensive in points cost than it ever was before 
I, again, love this. I don't like huge, huge, huge battles and loads and loads and loads. I think, for me, it gets bogged down and it gets slow, and I'm not a massive fan of that. This is obviously also a good point for people that are starting armies or coming into the hobby, because it's not going to cost quite as much in terms of actual money to put together a 2,000-point force, because you don't need so many models. Finally, on that article, they announced the app. It's 2020. The app should have been years ago. The app should have been with 8th edition, but they're doing it. Okay, I don't want to keep criticising, they're doing it. We asked for an app, they're bringing us an app. They're telling us the app is going to have points values, it's going to have a way to put together your roster, so RIP Battle Scribe. Uh, well, if the Games Workshop one works, of course. Um, but they say it's going to have a way of putting together your roster. What I'm hoping is we see something very, very similar to the AOS app. If you haven't looked at the AOS app, if you're not an AOS player, download it, it's free, and have a look anyway. You can pay a subscription for the list building on AOS, you don't need to do that. You can have a look at what's on the app already, just to have a f get a feel for it. That's something that if, I think if they bring that into 40k, is immensely positive. Immensely positive. And they've already hinted as well, I think from the Twitch stream, that when you buy a codex for an army, you're going to get downloadable rules for your app so everything can be digital which means I don't need to take 455 books to every event or 14 I think it is documents if you're an Imperial Fist player right now I can just take an iPhone or a tablet or something similar and off I go that's an amazing change so again you've listened Games Workshop I can't complain too much so obviously I've kind of covered command points and match play all in the same first spiel I just get excited because this stuff is really really good um, but touching on command points they do on the command point article which was released on the 4th of June so the day after they do show you that it's up to 500, 501 to 1,000, 1,001 to 2,000. So that clarifies that. And it also gives you the equivalent power level. So we know they're still using power level in 9th edition, which is interesting because it's a system that I thought was really, really terrible in 8. In fact, I used it a few times and I really hated power level. The differences in two forces by using it was far too extreme. Even if you're friends and you're trying to be balanced and sort of play a friendly game with each other, I still thought that was it was too it was too vague and I didn't like that level of vague. Some people loved it and it's great for new people getting into the hobby. I'm not saying power level was a terrible system. In general just that I didn't like it and I wasn't a fan of it and I didn't really use it I think most people that were playing 40k ended up just using points because it was just it just made more sense and it had there was more semblance of balance when you were using the point system on that article they obviously talk about the detachment bonus that we've already told you so a battalion detachment three plus three command points if your warlord is part of this detachment and um, that's really interesting otherwise a battalion basically looks exactly the same as it did before with the number of available slots it talks briefly about the command phase, but I've kind of covered that already. And then it says more stratagems for everyone, and it gives us a new stratagem called Cut Them Down. So as you guys know, in 8th edition, there was three available stratagems to every single army. There was auto-passing morale for two command points. There was uh, interrupting combat for two command points. And another one, the command point reroll that everyone hates. Now they've introduced a new one called Cut Them Down for a command point. If your uh, opponent chooses to flee, you can spend that command point, roll a number of d6 uh, equivalent to the number of models that are in range, essentially. On a six, they suffer a mortal wound. It gives you an opportunity to basically cause some damage to, an art, to, a, to a unit that's fleeing from combat. Really nice, really... I like that quite a lot because it's quite narrative. They have stated there's now seven stratagems available to every general. So instead of the three basic ones we had before, we've now got seven. Again, it's a welcome change. I think we could have done with a couple more basic uh, basic stratagems before for people to use. This one looks really eloquent. I quite like it. It's a good change again. The final relevant article I wanted to talk about today was released on the 5th of June. So they're dropping daily releases and new information is coming out all the time. This might be a video that becomes weekly until the release happens. I don't know. I'm not promising a series. But this is just stuff that I thought was really important. I've seen a lot of chat about so I think it's worth clarifying. They've talked about the scale of the game and scale of battles. I think it's, this particular is called Four Sizes Fit All. So they talk about number of detachments as per the different levels of battles. We've talked about combat patrols, incursion strike forces and onslaughts being between 500 points up to 3,000. They then limit the number of detachments. So a strike force 2,000, the one we're used to is three detachments which is pretty much what we were used to. So really that's no change. It's up to that number of detachments. You don't have to take three. It's up to three detachments. A combat patrol is one. Incursion at 1,000 points is two and onslaught is four no real news there i think that was pretty much the same as ex existed in eighth edition it's just clarified so then they talk about battle duration how long a game takes of warhammer 40k in ninth edition and it's interesting because they set it on an hourly basis so a combat patrol is one hour a strike force the one we're all going to love because it's up to 2,000 points they say three hours and i think maybe that's a bit of an overestimation as to how long it might take so don't be put off i'm not entirely sure a 2,000 point game in ninth edition when you consider that the armies are likely to be smaller because the points are going up I'm not sure they're going to take three hours in total. They might do. They might do. I don't know the differences. I don't know how long this command phase is going to take. And obviously, if you've got new players or it's casual play, it's probably quite an accurate representation. But if you're talking match play and tournaments and events and stuff, maybe it's not going to take three hours. I don't know. But I like the fact they give you a rough guide as to how long it might take. I don't know if they're saying limit it to three hours and no more, or 
it should take roughly this long. It'd be interesting to see how that's going to be implemented, specifically across events and tournaments. There's a number of things that are now going to affect, I think, the speed in which the game is played. For example, we have an extra phase. That's negative impact on speed because there is an extra phase but maybe just maybe it's going to allow them to tidy up certain aspects of the game and allow them to only happen in the command phase i like the idea perhaps that a lot of stratagems would need to be played in the command phase or things or abilities for warlords and stuff or abilities for characters happen in the command phase maybe that ties it up a little bit and it stops some of the random sporadic stuff that was happening before perhaps it's going to be a bit better than i'm expecting but at the moment as an additional phase it's going to add some time to the game that said with smaller armies like i've already covered because the points costs are increasing across the board that should speed it up and the last point they've got create the battlefield this could potentially speed it up as well this has probably been the announcement that's caused the most uproar is i want to call it uproar i don't know if i want to call it uproar it's probably the announcement that's got a lot of people going i don't what battlefields creating your battlefield and the size of it they've now changed the size of battlefields so that a combat patrol incursion is x distance 44 to 30 inches is what they've claimed a strike force is 44 inches to 60 and onslaught is 44 inches to 90 that's interesting because as you know none of those sizes are six foot by four foot boards now one thing i want to clarify before i go any further they are the minimum battle sizes they are not the specific battle sizes so a strike force says it is 44 to 60 inches you and i both know normal battles in 40k specifically on things like youtube on dz tv etc are four foot by six foot so 48 by 72 inches this is 44 by 60 no one has a 44 by 60 inch battle mat or a 44 by 60 inch table we all have four foot by six foot what does it mean well this is minimum battle size so it means that for me personally once i'm playing 2000 point games on dz or bringing them to youtube i'm going to continue to play on four foot by six foot it just makes sense my table is built that way i have all the battle mats i'm not going to start cutting up battle mats just to sm please don't cut up your battle mats because it's minimum size you can have bigger there is a downside to it though you've seen my table if you've watched the channel before i've now got lips around all the sides because i don't like my dice falling off the edge i like there to be a bit of security and safety on the table so things don't just get knocked off the edge like titans winters however it's minimum size and that's minimum size for onslaught as well so onslaught 3000 points i don't tend to play above 2000 points on the channel but on occasion we have onslaught is up to 3000 points above 2000 points and it says 44 inches so again less than four feet but by 90 90 inches so over six feet i can't do that on my table a lot of people can't do that on their gaming tables. For me personally, this was a really stupid idea. To have a minimum size of 44 by 90 inches, this at the moment is the one thing I can see that's probably going to be ignored the most. I don't see the need for that to have changed. I understand a combat patrol incursion having a minimum distance, but again, 44 by 30 inches? Why couldn't you just do four foot by four foot? Or four foot by three foot? I don't know. I don't understand why you needed this... I, these are weird sizes for a company that produces a battle board that is six foot by four foot these are strange changes and i don't like these changes i'm not fussed because they're a minimum size like i say i'm going to continue to play six foot by four foot and again i don't tend to do all that many events and on the channel i, I said this so many times before you play your 40k so if you don't want to play these minimum sizes play whatever you want play your 40k these are rules and guidelines you can change them you can adapt them for your own version of 40k you don't have to stick to these rules 44 by 90 inches is a minimum size for a onslaught i won't i won't be following that rule i just won't and although it says 44 by 30 inches for a patrol if i did that level of game I would probably do four foot by four foot because it's easier. I wouldn't be following this minimum size. What's interesting is there's a lot of tournament scenes out there that have basically hinted that already they're going to go to the smaller sizes. So they're going to go to 44 by 60 inches for the strike force. This is what I was talking about, about other factors that might speed the game up. I think this could make matches quicker for tournament play. And that's possibly why tournament organizers are looking at it. More frantic, more speedy, quicker games because they're a smaller size game. What's interesting is they've also hinted during the releases that ninth edition is going to be a lot better for melee focused army something i welcome as a player who runs a world eaters army and i'm currently building space wolves i definitely welcome that this is something else that i think is going to help that it's a smaller table size it means it's quicker to get across the board ninth edition could be the melee edition 
Maybe, possibly. I like the fact that models and armies could get board across the board quicker, saying that as a person who's going to keep stick to six foot by four foot. In addition, because the armies are smaller, again, because points costs, you've got less stuff that's going to take you out before you get to your opponent. I do, however, sympathise for all the tournament organisers out there. My friend Ricky, who runs Confrontation in Portsmouth, the guys at SM Battle Reports have got six foot by four foot battle mats and tables everywhere, and a lot of the tournament scenes are now saying, we're going to go to the new smaller table size. I sympathise with them, who have built these tables, built these boards, built these these things over time to be six foot by four foot because it's always been six foot by four foot and are now being told actually 44 by 60 inches is what we're going to go for now i sympathize with those guys massively they've also hinted that there's different mission sets i think they said there's something like 18 eternal war missions in the rule book i i do not ever criticize having more ways of playing 40k from games workshop i think this is excellent one of the things they did really well in eighth edition was continue to release new fresh missions each time so having more in the starter book from the off is never a bad thing for me they say that some of them scale to different size games so some of them are aimed at the smaller combat patrols some of them at the bigger strike force games i like this i think this is very very good and it makes sense that not every single mission will fit every single size of game so there it is the facts we know about ninth edition i did say a while ago when i did the games workshop our reopening video that i wanted to do some more of these smaller type videos that just feed you the facts and give you the news so you don't have to trawl through the community page and read multiple articles i'm hopefully just going to give you that information for you guys to take on board digest and look forward to ninth edition personally having read all of this stuff i'm really excited about ninth at the moment i I was starting to lose the love for 8th a little bit because of the bookkeeping and the rules bloat. This is looking like a really nicely put together rule set so far. Touch wood that they don't mess it up. Please don't mess it up because it's looking like it's going to be really, really good. I'm excited to get our hands on the rules here on the channel and start having a play with 9th edition. What are you guys looking forward to the most? Out of the stuff we've just talked about, what stuff excites you? What stuff don't you like? Some of the stuff some of these people that we talk to daily have already said they're not a fan of. People have been up in arms about the battle mat sizes. People aren't a massive fan of how the command point system has changed. What, what do you guys like? What do you guys don't like? What do you guys don't like? <laughs> like does that make sense? It can't, does it? I'm not maybe a little bit what i'd love to know is what what change you're most excited to see and which change you're actually the most apprehensive about as well not necessarily a moan or a whinge but the one you're looking at it going i'm not sure about that one let me know about it in the comments below i'll be interested to hear what your guys thoughts are on the announcements we've had so far so that's it for this video guys like i said if you like the haircut give it a thumbs up if you don't a thumbs down um please subscribe to the channel because we're going to keep chucking these sorts of hobby videos hobby videos out as well as the normal stuff that i've been putting out recently the vlog stuff the tech stuff more hobby videos i can't wait to be doing battle reports again in the future once lockdown lifts please go away please go away COVID. i don't like you anymore anymore i never liked you in the first place but please subscribe if you want to watch more hit that bell if you want to be notified thank you very very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one